You know, I've been thinking about making my own mods sometime. It shouldn't be too hard, right? Alright, let's see here. Oh, the wiki. That should help. Whoa, 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 calm down, calm down. It's not as bad as it looks. In this video, I'll show you the basics of modding for setup as well as to add your own custom weapon into the game. All right, ready? Here we go. All right, actually, before we get into this, you'll want Visual Studio installed as well as some basic C-sharp experience for, for this series. So if you don't have any of those, I suggest doing that first and coming back to this video later. I'd also suggest having a mod like Dragon Lens or Cheat Sheet installed so you can easily access your weapons. All right, let's actually get started. Alright, first of all, to create a mod, it's actually really simple. All you need to do is to head to Workshop, Develop Mods, ignore these mods, they're for later videos. Anyways, hit Create Mod, and you'll see four blanks. For the mod name, I'll put Test Mod. Make sure there's no spaces in this one, since this is going to be the name you refer to in your code. For display name, again, I'll put Test Mod. This one you can actually add spaces to, since, well, as it says, it's the display name. The thing that everyone who downloads your mod will see. Finally, for the author, you put your name, and leave the basic sword blank for now, as I'll show you how to set that up from scratch a little bit later in the video. After all that's done, click create. And would you look at that, you've just created your first mod. And with that, this video is officially over. Alright, thanks for watching guys, see you in the next one. <laughs> uh, just kidding, we're not done yet. After your mod's been created, you'll want to click the Open CS Project button, as this will open it up in Visual Studio, allowing us to finally start coding. Right now, there isn't really much in the mod at all, so we're first going to start by creating some new folders. First, create an assets folder, then a common folder, then a content folder. In that content folder, you want to create another folder called items. And in that folder, you'll want one more folder for weapons. And finally, you want to create a file called testsword.cs or whatever you plan on naming your weapon. Also, make sure to drag in the sprite file as well, making sure it has the exact same name as your class or else it will not work properly. In the test sword class, we'll first want to add references to different namespaces we'll be using. So we'll want to use microsoft.xna.framework, using terraria, using terraria.id, and finally using terraria.modloader. Next, we'll need to inherit from mod items, so we'll have all the methods to, you know, actually make the weapon. First, we'll need to do public override void set defaults, and inside that method, we're going to add a few properties to get our weapon to function as we want it. Width and height are self-explanatory, how big the sprite is. The use style, use time, and use animation are also somewhat self-explanatory as they define how your weapon is used, if it's swung or anything like that, and the time it takes to use that item. The damage type is what class you'll want your weapon to fall under. For this tutorial, I'll stick to melee. Damage, knockback, and crit I don't need to really explain, and the value of the item is just how much you want that item to sell for in NPC shops. Finally, the rare variable is the rarity of your item. Check the wiki page on that if you're curious. And the use sound is, is what you want your item to make every time it's used, again, self-explanatory. After you've set all of your item's properties, you want to override a new method called onHitNPC, which is just a method that runs whenever your weapon hits an NPC. For this tutorial, I just made the weapon inflict frostburn when it hits an enemy. And with that, your weapon should be complete. Head over to Cmod Loader, hit Build and Reload, and it should be good. If you get an error saying no suitable method found to override, I would suggest heading to the example mod repository and copy pasting a similar function because apparently these two are different even though they, they look the exact same. If someone finds a typo or anything in this, please tell me in the comments. I literally don't see a difference. Anyways, after solving that error, hit build and reload and tmod loader and your weapon should be there. Now, I could stop this video here, but I mean, this, this is boring, let's spice it up some more. Head over to your content folder, create a new folder named projectiles, and inside that folder create a file called testswordprojectile.cs, or again, whatever you decided to name your weapon. Next, we're going to want to be using microsoft.xna.framework, terraria, terraria.id, and terraria.modloader. Inherit from mod projectile this time and override the set defaults method. A lot of the properties are very similar to the item, however, there are some differences. You have width and height, which again is the sprite size. AI style is what AI your projectile will be using. Or you can set that to values aligning to vanilla AI projectiles, but if you want custom AI like, like in this tutorial, you'll want to set that to zero. Projectile friendly being true, make sure it's friendly to the player, and projectile not hostile being false, make sure it doesn't hurt the player. Damage type again will be melee. 
The penetration is how many times your projectile can hit enemies before it automatically despawns. We'll set that to 10. Time left is just how long it takes your projectile lasts before it automatically despawns. There's 60 ticks per second, so times however long you want your projectile to last by 60 to get an accurate time. In my case, I'll set this to 720 for 12 seconds. I'll have the projectile emit a small amount of light, ignore water, meaning it won't slow down on contact with water, as well as collide with tiles. Extra updates aren't really needed for this projectile as it's mainly used for really, really fast moving projectiles that would have a chance of clipping through blocks. Alright, now for the fun part, the AI of the projectile. In case you're wondering what projectile.ai is, it's basically a small array of three different numbers that you can use to store various things about the projectile, like how long it's been since it last summoned something, or how long it or how long it has before it needs to change a direction or something. For this projectile, I have one counter that goes up by one every single tick, and for 20 ticks it spawns a new cursed flame projectile that has the exact same velocity as the main projectile. And after 10 projectiles have been spawned, it falls back down. Now, uh... Now with the projectile complete, all we need to do is go back to the test sword class and add two things. Item.shoot is equal to mod content dot projectile type test sword projectile, and item.shoot speed is equal to 8. And with that, the projectile should be finished. Rebuild your mod, and you can see that it works exactly as it was coded. Spawns a curse flame projectile every 20 ticks, and after 10 of them spawned, it falls back down. Before I end off this first part, let me show you some fun things that you can do with this projectile. Want the projectile to inflict frostburn when it hits an enemy as well? Well, with this code right here, you can do that. Want your projectile to spawn bees? So, so many bees? Well, just change the projectile ID to B, and you can do that. Do you want your projectile to completely ignore immunity frames? Well, with these two lines of code right here, uh, well, you can, uh... Yeah, you can, you can do that. Alrighty, there's a ton of stuff that you can do with just a simple sword and projectile. I definitely suggest experimenting with other things that you can do. You can also look at the example mod if you want to see other things that I haven't covered yet, or just want to steal, <coughs> I mean, borrow some code, you can do that as well. If you need any help with your mod, you can join the Team Mod Loader Discord, and well, yeah, that's about it. I'll leave links in the description for all these, and with that, hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial, as it's quite a bit different from the usual playthrough style content I make, and well, yeah, see you in the next one.